Hello, I'm the Beauty Professor, and you can find my beauty blog at beautyprofessor.net. So let's begin with skincare. Lately, I've been prepping and priming my face after cleansing with the Mila Morsi pH Balancing Toner, which is long time a favorite. And I just give myself a spritz. I'll do this in real time, which really just prepares my skin for all subsequent skincare. It always balances my face out. I never feel like I have any excess oiliness. It's just great for resetting the complexion and refreshing throughout the day. Then I've been using a pump of the Eresa EXP30, which is kind of an all-in-one anti-ager. It really does a great job of smoothing out the skin, tightening and lifting, and I've been experimenting it with it for a few weeks now. and. I'm really impressed with how it performs on my face. So I'm just gonna press it into my skin and let it take action. And now that that's all rubbed in, I'm going to follow with the Le Métier de Beauté Peau Vierge. I've talked about it countless times on this channel and blog. And I'm just going to use one pump of the number two to add additional moisture and also kind of a light, very, very subtle tint and some illuminating properties. So I'm just distributing that evenly throughout my entire face. It does have anti-aging properties as well, so it's a great all-around product. To finalize skincare, I'm going to use just a touch of the brand new SK2 RNA Power Eye Cream. I adore the SK2 line. I find the products to be very effective. They perform so well on a variety of skin types. And this cream is designed to be used in the orbital region to brighten, tighten, lift, and moisturize. It's a great anti-aging elixir. So I'm putting just the smallest amount on my finger. And as we know with eye cream, just a light patting motion is best for the delicate eye area. So I'm just going to pat it in. I've been experimenting with this cream for the last week and a half or so, and so far I'm very pleased with what I'm seeing. It's also performed really well on my sensitive skin, and I do wear contacts, which makes my eyes extra sensitive, and yet this cream has been incredibly friendly to in those conditions. Done. On to foundation. So my skin is kind of in a transitional period in terms of its foundation matches. I am lighter than I have been for many months prior and I know that I'll probably get even a little bit lighter as we head into the tail end of winter and then my skin will start to warm up again. I would consider it a light medium olive tone skin for most of the year. So that being said, I typically at this point in the year mix foundations and not only foundation shades but in some cases foundation formulas to get that perfect match. Today I'm going to be combining the Giorgio Armani Luminous Silk Foundation in number six, which has very golden yellow undertones, good for light olive skin. And also I'm using the Surat Surreal Real Skin Foundation Wand in number six, incidentally, which in this case has kind of a more neutral to rosy light medium tone. So the two together creates a great neutral foundation that is the perfect depth for my current skin tone. So I'm going to start with the Surat and it's got a great pumping mechanism and a easy brush for application on the go. And I'll just bring some through here. You can see that it's definitely in the, the zone for matching my skin. And that's all I'm going to apply. This is the crisis averted. I thought this was destroyed and instead it survived. So well done on Sisley for building a very formidable palette. As I was saying, the Surat foundation is deceptively potent. So you put it on and you might feel like you need to add more because it's hard to see on the skin, but it's really designed to just blend into your skin seamlessly, which is what you want with the foundation. So I'm just using a dampened beauty blender and this is not a dirty beauty blender, this is actually the nude shade. So it's got this neutral color from the start. And I'm just patting this in. Now before everything is set, I'm going to add just a pump, a little less than a pump of the Luminous Silk from Armani. And this has that golden color undertone that I was describing. I'm going to kind of put that 
atop the Surratt and mix the two together. I find the Surratt has a great, very natural skin finish. And of course, luminous silk is a little bit more luminous in nature. So the combination just creates a lovely canvas that stays intact all day. I can teach from nine in the morning until nine at night and a couple days a week I do. And this just stays put. It's been a great foundation duo for me. Now that my base is complete, I'm going to add a touch of the La Mer concealer in medium, which I find to be quite a light shade for a medium toned concealer. That being said, it brightens up the under eye region very nicely. So I'm just bringing that in like so, and I'll go ahead and I will blend it out after my eye makeup so that I can get a really nice clean finish and also inadvertently remove any errant marks from my eyeshadow. For a bronzer, I'll be using the brand new Sicily Fido Touche Trio Miel Canale. It's a trio of face warming shades that you can use to lightly contour and bronze. And there's even a bright kind of coral pink that you can use on the apples of your cheeks for additional radiance and brightening. I am also going to use my adorably diminutive Jenny Patikin Petite brush set. I'm using the face and cheek brush, which is super soft. It is vegan, but the bristles are so dense and yet so very soft on the face. They just really distribute the product, the powders especially, really well. So I'm just sweeping some onto my, the hollows of my cheekbones. I'm not going for a serious contour, more of just like an all over warming effect. So I'm really focusing on the middle shade more than anything else. And buffing that in there. Bring a little bit along the perimeters of my face. And now that I've finished with the bronzing, I'll go ahead and use my Chikuhodo highlighter brush, but I use it more just like a cheek brush. And I'm going to pick up just a little bit of the pink for some blush action. Just liberally buffing it into the apples of my cheeks like this. I recently had an interview with the head designer of the color collection for Cicely and I learned so much. Her name is Anne. I learned so much about the inspiration behind her products and everything is about effortless beauty with Cicely. So you're getting this premium luxurious product but it's effortless to use and this is definitely indicative of that philosophy. I will be having close-ups of these palettes coming up soon. For eyes, I'm going to be using some new shades that I've assembled into a Surratt Grand Palette. This is the larger palette, so it holds either three blushes or six shadows. And I feel like this was just a refresh on some of the more neutral, warm, rosy shades that I wear. I, I still have some neutrals in there, but I also included an electric violet, a bright yellow, and this kind of soft matte khaki. More matte than I usually wear as well. So I'm using my Jenny Patekin Lid Crease Brush and I'll go ahead and apply this top brown shade, which of course I'll link to the exact shade name in the details box. But I'm just going to sweep that along my upper lid like that. You can already see it's creating great definition, kind of a soft, smoky brown. I wouldn't call it overtly warm. It's kind of like a neutral and really very subtle luminosity. I would almost feel like this performs most like a matte. And so I'm just setting the base here with this brown. Next I am going to take a bit of this shimmering kind of neutral taupe shade and bring that up towards my brow bone like so and that adds some luminosity but nothing overt. Using actually the same brush. And then I'll get in with this tiny line slash smudge brush and I'm going to go with this electric violet along my lower lash line, which is a little bit adventurous for me, but I do think that violet works well with lighter eyes. I think it looks beautiful on all eye colors, but I've been told that it's a good shade for green to kind of bring out the green. So I'm doing this very casually. 
And I'm very thankful for a tiny brush to kind of do the work for me. Smudging that out. Now I'm gonna take just the smallest touch of the bright golden yellow here, take the excess off, and then I'm gonna bring it into the corner of my eye here. Just kind of smudging that outward for some additional luminosity. And it just allows you to get the feeling of the yellow without going crazy with yellow. Such a fun color though, I think it's gonna be really popular for spring. And then to make a little more definition in the crease. I'm using just one product, the Sisley Fido Eye Twist in number 11, which is kind of a bronzy color. And I'm just gonna bring it across there like that. No blending. Maybe I'll actually use a little brush, but for the most part, I'm letting the pencil and the shape of the pencil do the work there. Just to kind of define my crease. Use my larger brush to kind of just create some continuity. I feel like the effect is totally different than what I would normally wear, but it still feels like it's appropriate for our every day. Just has a little more time and creativity put into the mix. For brows, I am embracing the Tom Ford Fiber Brow Gel in Taupe. I'm actually on my second tube of this. I just picked up a new one because I ran through my other one after using it so consistently. So I just bring it right through my brows like this, brushing upward. It creates a nice defined, polished, feathery brow that stays in place. I've said many times I like a natural brow, and I find that this taupe shade has like zero warmth to it, zero redness, which I think is really important if you don't have any red in your brows to begin with, as I don't. So I'm just applying liberally, and you can already see the difference there. Bringing that through, it does add some volume to your brows as well, so you get everything in a single product. To highlight, I'm going to be working with the new Kevin Aquan Neo Limelight. This is a lavender looking confection. It's like this and I'll link to swatches in my vlog below. And I'm using the Surratt Artistique Highlight Brush, which has this great tapered tip, which allows you to really distribute highlighter in a seamless fashion. I'm just going to focus on the lighter side here and I'll be bringing that through the high points of my face down the bridge of my nose and I find this is a really interesting highlighter because it's different than my normal warm golden bronzy tones that I like to embrace for highlighter. This has a cooler more pastel effect but I still feel like it's really fresh and interesting and then I'm going to use a little bit of the deeper purple shade on the apples of my cheeks. You can see how it creates this pearly kind of mulberry cheek that's not too dark and still has a lot of radiance. Before I get to lips, I'm gonna do two steps with my eyes that I haven't yet done. One is involving the Marc Jacobs highlighter. This is in the shade Orange Crush, which is kind of, as the name would imply, a crazy orange shade. I feel like it goes well with my overall color scheme today. And once again, it's out of the ordinary for me, but still interesting. I'm bringing it actually along the purple line for some luminosity and a little bit of warmth, just a touch. If you've experienced the Marc Jacobs highliners, you know that they stay in place. They are impervious to migration or smearing off. They just are so stalwart once they set. So it's great for this lower eye region that might be prone to tearing. Then I'm going to add some mascara, and I'm working with the Sisley So Intense Mascara. I've used So Curl, So Intense is new to me, and I am so fascinated by this comb. I would look at this and think, there's no way I can build volume with this, but you truly can, and I'll show you in this video. I'm just going to take the straight part to my lash line and press it in there. This mascara is fortified with lash building ingredients, so you want to get that right at the root off the top. Then I'm going to use the comb and I'm going to sweep through my lashes. The comb is so subtle, you wouldn't think it was doing anything. And yet the proof is here. You can see how much more 
lengthened and full my lashes are, and that's just with this real-time application. Bring some more to the bottom, and then just brushing through. It doesn't clump, it doesn't, it doesn't flake off, and I wore it yesterday for like 10 hours, and it looked as if I had just applied it. It's amazing. I don't know why it took me so long to finally try it. And my mascara is complete. Hopefully you can see, I just went ahead and applied the two coats to this eye as well. And my lashes are long, fluttery, dark, fuller. It's just an amazing formula. Finally, for lips, I am working with the Tom Ford Shade and Illuminate Duo. This is in shade number two. And I have swatches of all of these duos on my blog, which I'll link to, but I love the fact that it comes with a brush and also kind of a, a foam applicator or a sponge applicator as well. This is the perfect nude combination and it's meant to be applied in tandems. Before I apply, I'm just putting a light coat of the YSL Lip Perfector. It's the top secrets, it's new. And it's really cushiony, hydrating as a balm. I wouldn't say it has any color, but it does kind of make your lips glow, if that makes any sense. It's also excellent under lip color, so it kind of acts as a great primer, and I've been reaching for this a ton. Back to the lip color, so I'm taking the brush and I'm working with the lighter shade first, and I'm just sleeping it onto my lips, like so. You can also use your fingers if you need to in a GIF. Applying. Now this is my typical pale pink nude shade, but I'm going to step it up with a little depth using the darker shade and sleeping that in as well, mixing it together. I tend to be a little more cavalier about mixing the two shades, but you could get very strategic and precise if you were so inclined. That's essentially the lip right there. This is a semi-matte formula, but it does have a soft glow, lasts for hours, my lips feel comfortable. I highly recommend this. I've already procured a backup. I love this shade so much. I could just leave my lips as they are, but I'm going to apply a bit of the Clé de Peau Radiant Rouge Liquid Lipstick in number 11, which I believe is called Lingerie. I wear this so often, I'm gonna be picking up a backup soon, but every time I wear it, someone's like, oh, what's on your lips? I'm just gonna sweep a little bit along the center here, and it's just enough shine and color to to really set the look for the whole day and add some additional dimension. I also really like it because it's a great touch up shade. If you just need to grab something from your purse and put something on your lips to give you life, this is the shade to do that. And I think it really complements the spectrum of skin tones while still providing that nude lip look. To finish, I'm just going to go super low maintenance with my hair and apply a bit of the Orbe Shine Light Reflecting Spray. And I typically just kind of Spray it like that and then run a brush through, and sometimes I don't even brush it, but it does add an amazing scent to the hair. It's so good, but also it does add a brilliant shine, so if you're under lights or you're outdoors, it definitely imparts some radiance on the hair and really smooths out any flyaways. I'm on my second bottle. To give you some closing thoughts on products, I did want to show you that the Jenny Patekin Petite's brush it comes... The, that the Jenny Patigan Petite brushes come in a self-contained case, which makes it great for like standing up on a flat surface, but also for tossing into your purse if you wanna have all your brushes at your disposal, but you wanna keep them protected and germ-free. So this is a great, just self-contained brush situation. Also, I've been using a lot of the Beaker, the BKR, glass water bottle. I try to drink water. I don't drink as much as I would like to, but I feel better about drinking water from something that's made of glass. So, and this is just so handy and very secure. I keep it in my work bag and just fill it up throughout the day. Also, for a natural deodorant, I've been using the Ursa Major Hop and Fresh deodorant. I bought this at the new Credo store in Los Angeles and it smells really fresh but it is completely free of all harmful ingredients. So while I haven't had the most stellar experiences with natural deodorant, this has been maybe my favorite so far because I do get a good like 15 hours of performance out of this before I feel like I really need to add some more into the mix. So I wanted to mention that. 
Finally, my dress is from American Apparel. Hopefully you can see this. American Apparel is closing, so I've been just doing orders here and there. Everything is on sale in most cases and also 40% off. And this dress is gonna be great for work. I bought it in a couple of colors. And so completes the final look. I hope you enjoyed the process and I thank you so much for watching. I have a host of exciting content in the works. I can't wait to share and I thank you for your requests along the way. Also, thank you so much for being so faithful both on Beauty Professor and also on my Instagram. It's always great to hear from you there. And finally, per many of your requests, I wanted to bring Jethro into frame. I just woke this guy up. He's getting, hey you, I'm so sorry. But <laughs> he was taking a nap and he's getting a bath tonight. But in the interim, I wanted to be able to bring him on to say hello. So thank you for being so sweet about him and for asking for him. He is here. And as Jethro, as ever. As always, please don't forget to visit me at my blog, Beauty Professor, which can be found at beautyprofessor.net. Take care.